Okay, so let's take a look at question number 14. Okay, so what we're given here is we're given the average grade for an exam, which is 64, and it has a standard deviation of 10. And then it says if 20 students scored between 73 and 86 on the exam, how many students actually took the exam in total? Okay, so 20 got the score, but we don't know how big the class was, essentially. Okay, and then the question here says to use Z scores in your solution. Okay, so what we need to do is kind of understand what we're trying to figure out here. Okay, so let me just draw, we'll draw a little curve again. It's just this little curve. Okay, so we know the, um, the average grade is 64 and we know there's a standard deviation of 10. So if we were to just think about this in terms of a raw score, the middle of the curve, okay, is going to be 64. And we know we have a specific standard deviation. And we are trying to figure out that, well, we are told that between 73, so that's above the average, and then 86, which is a little bit higher, okay, there's an area that this curve covers, okay, and this area here, this percent of that area, okay, is representative of 20 students, okay, so we don't know what this area is here, okay, this is the area, this is the percentage, okay, so we don't know what that is yet, but we know that this represents 20 students. Okay, so what we're trying to figure out is if we knew um, what, what would be the total number of students that took the, uh, the, the test, because let, let's say it's 100 students, so then 20 out of 100, that area would represent 20%, um, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's the amount, it's, it's the probability that that area covers that represents the 20 students. Okay, so that's what we're kind of, that's the idea of what we're trying to figure out here. We're looking to somehow calculate what that area is. Now, there is some functions that we can go through and just run it through the calculator and, and get that, but they want you to kind of understand this in terms of Z scores. So you have to remember what a Z score is. The Z score is a, it's where we standardize the, the mean to zero. Okay, and then we, we have all those numbers um, above zero or below zero, which is the Z score, because right now these are raw values. Okay, so our formula for the Z score, and we'll just put it down over here, okay, is equal to the, um, the data point minus the mean, okay, all over the standard deviation. Okay, and so what we want to do is now transform the, the data point of 73 and 86 into our Z scores. Okay, so let's do the first one here. So the Z score for the first one for 73 is going to be 73 minus 64 all divided by 10. Okay, because 10 is our standard deviation. So 73 minus 64 is 9 divided by 10. So our Z score here is 0.9. Okay, and then our Z score for the second data point is going to be 86 minus 64, and then we divide that by 10. Okay, so this is going to be um, 86 minus 64, let's make sure we get that right here, is 22, and we're dividing it by 10, and that's going to be 2.20. Okay, so that's what our, our true Z score values are. So we could just rebuild this curve where our mean is going to be zero and our first number is going to be 0.9 and then 0.2. So we can now use um, a function, a cal calculator function to calculate what is the area between 0.9 and 2.2. Okay, so the way we use that is on our calculator, again our TI calculator, you're going to use the norm CDF function Okay, and we don't have to put in um, the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one when we're using the Z scores. You can just type in the actual Z scores. So we're gonna go from 0.9 to 2.20. Okay, the, the calculator assumes we're using a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, and this is going to give us 0 0.1702. Okay, so that number, okay, is the area, the percentage, here. So that means 17.02% of the 
of the class equals 20. Okay, so that's what we're actually um, figuring out here. So th that's what this, this means. This means 17.02% um, of a number, okay, is 20. Okay, so this is like one of those statements that you have to think back from before. So this number is going to be a little bit bigger, right? It's going to be 17.2% of some larger number is going to give us 20. Okay, so if we had to do this in the equation, we can do it just as this 0 0.1702 times the number x, which is we don't what we don't know is, so remember is means equals, is equal to 20. So x is just going to be simply 20 students divided by 0 0.101702. So then x is going to be equal to, um, we can, you don't have to round this up to the nearest student, so it's going to be 20 divided by 0 0.1702, which is 117.5. So either 117 or we'll round it up to 118 students. That is the number of students that were in the class that wrote that, that test. Um, given this data that you see. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now we could have just used um, the norm CDF function and put in 64 and 10 as the mean and the standard deviation because this can take two other parameters. Um, but they wanted you to do the exercise where you convert this into Z scores, okay, and then you use the function to find the area. So that's the percent that represents the 20 students. And then so from that, we can figure out what the total number of students were. Okay, so that's how that question would work out.